Hey cellist, so I'm making this video to answer a question uh, by one of the members of the Midlife Cellist group who asked about how to understand the geography of the fingerboard on the cello in a really simple way. So there's lots of methods of how to understand where notes are on the cello, and this can get pretty confusing for a lot of people. So I'm gonna show you my method of understanding where the notes are, and how this kind of leads into your understanding of positions in general. So what I like to do to understand the fingerboard of the cello is to have a way to visualize where the notes are. Because as you have probably figured out, with a fretless instrument like the cello, it's kind of ambiguous, right? You can use your ear to find notes, of course, but how do you know kind of visually and logically where these notes lie? So the answer to that question can be answered by taking a look at the fretboard of a guitar. So I'm just going to put down my cello for a second. So some of you might be familiar with guitars and have seen that guitars have frets. So for guitar players, a little bit like be, being a piano player, it's really easy to see where the notes are because they're organized by frets, right? This is one note, this is the next note, this is the next note, this is the next note. So say, for example, if you're playing on the A string, so this is the A string of a guitar, if I put my fingers down, I start on the A, my first finger in the first fret, that's A sharp, it's half a step above A. The next finger is half a step above that. So half a step above A sharp is B. Then the next note, half a step above B is B sharp, also known as C, and then C sharp, right? And if you were to keep going, these are all half steps. So A, A sharp, B, B sharp, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, etc., all the way up the fingerboard. Now you'll notice for each half step that I'm using a finger, right? Finger one, finger two, finger three, finger four. So on your cello, it's exactly the same way. There just aren't frets. Each time you put down a finger in one position, that is a half step. Now if we go back to the cello and kind of apply that, best to do this without your bow. We don't need to complicate things by adding the bow because right now what we're doing is we're really working on recognition of notes on the fingerboard. So let's start, let's just start on, let's say the D string. For most people that's a very familiar string. So we're going to play the notes going up the D string using the same method as we did on the guitar. So one finger equals one half step. Now to do this on the cello you need to be able to hear a half step. So let's say you're playing D. A half step above D, D sharp, sounds like this. Sorry. <laughs> D, D sharp. So the sound, that interval, D, D sharp, D, D sharp, this is the sound of a half step. You want to get that in your ear. So what I recommend you do is sing D, D sharp, D, D sharp, or just get that in your head before you start. That's the sound of a half step, and we're gonna be making half steps all the way up the string. Now you're starting in half position, which might not be familiar to some of you that haven't yet got to half position. Half position, your thumb is gonna be right here at the neck, and your first finger is right across from it to make the sound D, D sharp. So start with that, get that in your head. Try to sing it or hum it to yourself. And now we're just going to place the rest of the fingers in half steps, making that same sound. So D, D sharp, E, second finger, F, third finger, E to F is a half step, F to F sharp. So D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, and let me go back, F sharp. to sing or hum the notes even if you're not a good singer let's try that singing and humming the notes as you go up the fingerboard one finger equals one half step D D sharp E F F sharp F E D sharp D now if you're not 
not certain about the names of these half steps because every note, as you've probably figured out by now in music, every note has more than one name, right? If you're going up, it's probably sharps. D, D sharp, E. This is F, but F can also be called E sharp. F sharp, and then back. So continuing higher than that, like we were doing on the guitar, we're going to keep moving down in half steps, but as you can see, we ran out of fingers, right? We played all these half steps. We got to here. We're on F sharp with the fourth finger. We need to now go higher. We need to go a half step higher than F sharp. Thinking about that sound of the, of the half step. So, la, la, we need that note. La, la. And we're going to go to that note with your first finger so that we can start the pattern again. So D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and then you're going to keep going. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, and then back. is that you are putting together the name of the note with the sound of the note. That's how you get really good tuning and that's how you can adjust your fingers to know where the notes are without having to put tapes on your fingerboard, that kind of thing, which is very distracting. You're just going to learn what a half step sounds like. Like this. Or... Right? And this can take a little time to develop your sense of what a half step sounds like. If you're not quite sure what that half step is supposed to sound like, you might want to try playing the half steps on a keyboard on the piano, right? So playing white key, black key, white key, black key, and going all the way along the piano keyboard up and down, that's going to help you to develop a sense of what that half step is supposed to sound like. Because when you put down all your fingers and then you move, you need to know what that's going to sound like so it'll be in tune. strings. Your next challenge, of course, is that when you're playing a note, let's say, you know, you've played in this half position, and you need to know, for example, let's say I have my second finger on the E, right? We decided that D, D sharp, E is second finger. How do you know what note is across from E, let's say on the A string? or let's say on the G string across here. So what you need to do here, what's really helpful is having a circle of fifths. This is going to give you a very fast visual aid to help you know what note is right across from the note you're playing. So let's say you're playing E, second finger. So E on our circle of fifths is right here. The note that's going to be five notes higher, which means right across because our strings are tuned in fifths, that is the next note on the circle of fifths, that's B, right? So if this is E, this is B. E, B. Always helpful to sing these notes. It helps to kind of visualize so you know what's going on. And then what note is five notes lower? Well, I've got second finger on E, five notes lower is going the other way on the circle of fifths. So back to A here. And this rule, is the same no matter where you are on your cello. So let's say you're doing your half steps. Right, so this note here, if we were going up by half steps, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp. This is A sharp, also known as B flat. So where is A sharp on our circle of fifths? Well, we can't see an A sharp on this circle, this particular circle of fifths, but we know that A sharp is the same as the note B flat. Right here is B flat. 
So if this is B flat, across from B flat, five notes lower is going to be E flat. And five notes higher is going to be F. So circle of fifths works clockwise like this. These are always five notes apart from each other going clockwise around the circle. So that's how you know whatever position you're in, that's how you know what the notes are right next door. They're five notes apart. So hopefully that gives you a place to start. Now you can also talk about positions. And many of you, if you're learning Suzuki Method, you're probably also working with the Rick Mini position pieces, which are really a really great way to conceptualize and understand positions. And he has some really good music to help you practice getting around different positions. However, it can be a little bit confusing because the way that they're presented, the positions are not necessarily in a logical order. So as far as positions go and understanding how positions work, there's a very simple way to understand positions. So most of you will have started with the first position. So for example, you'll be familiar with on the A string, if you have your first finger on B, this is first position. So this is the equivalent, if you were playing on a guitar and you were in the frets, this is the equivalent of the second fret. There's a half step here that we're not playing when we're in first position, you're on the second fret, right? So if I'm playing B, this is my first position on the cello, but there is another half step between the B and the open A, right? That's your B flat. So if you're in first position, this is B. What is second position? Second position is just one note up from B. So you use the letter names to give you the name of the position. One note, note up from B means your first finger is on C. So if I move my finger up half a step to C, remember that half step? I'm now in second position. However, you can also be in second position if you're playing the note C sharp, because it's still a C, right? So if I have my first finger on C, that is second position. If I have my note on, if I have my finger on C sharp, that's also second position. And if you're working from Rick Mooney's position pieces, he uh, conceptualizes that as lower second position, lower sounding note, and upper second position, higher sounding note. So C is your lower second, C sharp is your upper second. And these are half steps away. So you're always moving half steps. So after the C sharp, that's your upper second, you would go to D, right? Half a step above C sharp is D. You're now in third position. So D, first finger, D sharp would be upper third position, and then fourth position, which for most of you is a fairly easy position to find because you're just putting your thumb at the back here and it's right across, right? So a really great, great way to start to really um, master positions is to play one finger scales. So you would start with your open A, you would play a half step above A, that's A sharp, with your first finger, then you're going to move up with your first finger to B, that's first position, C, lower second, C sharp, upper second, D, third, upper third, D sharp, and then fourth. Right? And of course, there's lots of other positions higher than that, but I'm just going through first through fourth because that's good for most uh, beginners and intermediate players. So A, again, you want to be naming these notes for yourself. This is how you're going to conceptualize where they are and ideally sing them as well. So A, A sharp, that's half position, B, first position, C, lower second, C sharp, upper second, D, lower third, D sharp, upper third, E is fourth. And that's the same for every string. You can go up by half steps. Until you're really comfortable with that sound. And then that's giving you a really great way of how to move to certain positions. Oh, and also, I just wanted to let you know that if you do, did enjoy this video and it was helpful to you, I'm having a workshop, a cello yoga workshop on January 16th at 2 p.m. And I'll put the link to that workshop underneath this video. Thank you.